Craig, thanks so much for joining us. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about Modus, which is a SaaS company focused on the reimbursement needs of mobile workers. So let's let's break that down. So so what does Modus actually do? Yeah. So our you know we're really a software led data company uh, that uh, applies that data to drive effective reimbursement for mixed use assets. So what I mean by mixed use asset is something you might use for both work and personal use. Um, two largest categories we're focused on are cars. Um, so we take, take people out of the old, you know, company car, uh, that, you know, the Bayesian Palo with the beige interior and instead empower, uh, empower drivers to go buy the car they want and then ensure that their employer is, uh, is fairly and accurately reimbursing them for the business use of that vehicle. And then we do the same thing for, uh, for the, uh, you know, our other primary asset class is, uh, is mobile phones, internet connections, uh, devices. So, you know, I'm sitting here with my phone talking to you. It's also the phone that, you know, I had a couple personal calls on this morning. Uh, some of those are business related. Obviously some of those are personal. How do we ensure that Modus is fairly and accurately reimbursing me for the business use and that I'm covering my personal use of, of that asset? Um, so those are kind of the two primary, you know, classes. We then take that one step further uh, because we have, you know, the largest database of um, and community of end users, particularly around vehicles. We then also look at ways that we can wring costs out for them. So how do we buy fuel cheaper for them? How do we help them get insurance more cost effectively? How do we help them buy cars cheaper, sell their cars cheaper, maintain their cars cheaper? Uh, and we do all those same things for, uh, for the phones as well. So what's the history of the company? Like what's the background story and, and what are the typical customers that you're, you're working with? Yeah, so quick history. I, I joined the company, what was then called Corporate Reimbursement Services, uh, which sort of just rolled off the tongue. Um, the, uh, it's hard to say it without yawning. Um, <laughs> but I joined that company in 2013. I came over with my senior management team from a, a prior uh, company in the education technology space. Um, really did a turnaround with that business. Um, it was a small, you know, more of a tech enabled service company. Uh, so we built out a SaaS mobile SaaS platform, uh, began to, you know, apply SaaS level margins and execution uh, into that business, rebranded it as Modus, really did a 180, you know, with the, the company and the company culture. And then uh, in, uh, I guess it was 2017, we partnered up with Toma Bravo, uh, you know, one of the, the leading B2B uh, software uh, investors in the country or in the world, actually. Um, and we went and bought uh, our largest uh, our largest competitor, which was a you know seventy year family run business uh, that actually the founder of corporate reimbursement services used to work there. Uh, so he'd kind of taken the idea from them. Um, so we partnered up with Toma. We bought uh, the company, which is called Runzheimer. That was the family name, uh, and then began transitioning those customers onto the SaaS platform uh, all around vehicle reimbursement. Um, and then a year ago, at about this time. Uh, you know, a little prior, so kind of April, May of last year, we then made another acquisition in the mobile uh, space. We bought a company called Wireless Analytics. Um, have since uh, signed up a few more uh, to add on and are beginning to apply our same knowledge and and uh, expertise around the, the mixed use devices, which I just just spoke about a, you know a moment ago. Um, so our customers, to answer your question, our customers are everything from companies that may have you know, five or 10 drivers or five or 10 remote workers or folks that are on shared use devices all the way up to like our largest customer has 17,000 drivers. Um, so, uh, so, you know, very small to very large businesses. Um, you think about our end user on the vehicle side, the, you know, a pharmaceutical drug rep is a, is a classic example. They wake up, uh, they get in their car every day. Uh, they typically drive a 90 mile closed loop. So they start their day and end their day in their driveway. And over the course of a year, they drive 17,000 business miles. Um, that's a lot of business miles. You think the average consumer drives about 13,000 miles total uh, in a vehicle. So these are people that live out of their car um, and work out of their car. Um, and then we also have other end users that are, you know, and particularly with, you know, kind of the COVID situation, they're people that are working from home. Um, uh, they may have always worked from home. Uh, in many instances, they're folks that are now being forced to work from home. Uh, they're consuming their internet connections. They're using their home, you know, home phones, home computers, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, their mobile devices. They look a lot like you and I. Um, and so we also partner up there again with everything from small businesses all the way up to, to large companies that, uh, 
we help them procure and manage and, and fairly and accurately reimburse for the, for the devices as well. So let, let's talk about the current stage of the company. So where's, where's the business at and what are the growth plans ahead? Yeah, so we're, uh, you know, we're, you know, kind of a 50%, you know, margin business. So we're, uh, you know, it's a very efficient, uh, you know, business from a, from an execution perspective. Um, you know, we're, our, you know, growth bogeys are in the 16 to 20% range. Uh, we're kind of in that classic mid cap. So sort of, you know, north of a hundred million and, you know, in top line revenue. Um, so, you know, it, it, enough, uh, enough wherewithal and resources that we can actually go do some interesting things. Uh, and in particular, in this environment, you know, we're very focused on the acceleration of our innovation curve uh, in places where we can really go meet customers' needs in a, in a you know, changing and evolving, uh, evolving world. Uh, but we're in growth mode. Uh, you know, how do, we, how do we grow, you know, effectively and, and as quickly as possible, but also, you know, prudently. Um, so, you know, being smart about where we're making our investments and, and with a real eye towards the changing environment for our, for our customers. Well, we're recording this, you know, in the midst of a pandemic. So it's uh, affecting how companies are thinking about work and offices and what that's going to look like in the future. And, uh, you know, Modus was one of the first companies that I noticed that decided to go fully remote. So talk about that decision because you guys called it, had, you know, work Working forward is how you called it. So talk about the yeah. decision to go fully remote and how that's going to, you know, affect things or make things better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that work forward, I, I, I will tell you, I would really scratch my head early on when people kept clinging this, to this notion of going back to work, back to work, back to work. And uh, maybe it's the entrepreneur in me. I mean, you know, I think about it. I look at my kids. I'm like, there, there's never in their lives and such a disruption of what they thought were norms that would never change. Um, and as an entrepreneur, I mean, that's a, that's a dream come true, right? I mean, for, for people to really reshape and rethink the way they think about trying to get to outcomes because norms and paradigms have shifted. Uh, I mean, what an exciting, what an exciting opportunity if you're, you know, if you're, you know, if the entrepreneur mindset, um, and I think that same mindset holds true to the way we think about motivating our people. Um, so this concept of going back, I just kept saying to my team, I'm like, guys, so the day we cut the ribbon on the U.S. economy and supposedly we're all back to work, whatever that day looks like, people are going to get in their car for 45 minutes to an hour and a half and commute into our office and say, well, that was a great use of my time. Um, I just don't see it. Um, so why don't we challenge what, what work forward will look like? Let's think, let's take all the things we've learned in the decades of the paradigm we've worked in. And now let's take, uh, take those applications. The bogeys are still the same. The objectives are still the same. We still want highly motivated, highly effective, highly engaged, you know, folks in a, in a winning culture. But let's think about maybe there are other ways to get to that end state. Um, and so that was kind of the box we framed out. Um, you know, we're not, I'm sure we don't have it right, uh, you know, at this point in time, we're kind of in our version one, but what became abundantly clear was spending the amount of money we do on real estate is vacant today. And depending on which state I am, I have different governors that tell me, you know, anywhere from 25 to 30% of my capacity is only allowed into the office to begin with. Uh, they've got a plexiglass between them. They have to wear masks. I mean, it's sort of everything we made the investment in space just went out the window. Um, our view was, how do we take those dollars and reinvest them back into the needs that our folks really have? Um, you know, things like childcare. You know, my folks that have kids that are under fifth grade that are trying to homeschool, uh, they need help. They need extra hands uh, around the house. Um, how do we drive engagement for their kids? We have, you know, our older kids, you know, do, you know, two, three times a week do uh, what we call modus munchkins, where, you know, they're reading to the kids of, of younger employees. And, you know, some of them are, propped up in their high chairs and staring at the screen and others are really engaged, but you know, it gives mom and dad kind of a reprieve for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. Um, That's a great also idea. From a, yeah. From a company engagement perspective. I mean, I dial in, you know, just to see the kids. I mean, it's just such a great way to connect and better understand what's going on in the daily lives of, you know, of our team members. Um, so it, it, you know, it became very easy for us to rationalize, uh, a reinvestment of those dollars 
a realignment. Uh, the way we got there was the way we do everything, which was we engaged our team. Uh, we listened to them. Uh, we asked them what their needs were. Uh, and then we tried to get creative uh, in, uh, in how we apply those dollars back to, back to meeting those needs. But we're, we're excited about working forward. Our folks have never been happier. They've never been more productive. Uh, we're still going to gather, you know, and bring folks together. I do think in the future, you know, there will be this notion of some sort of, you know, meeting space. So we're thinking more of kind of a hive concept where you've got, you know, kind of the Kinko's, you know, level production capability. So if I've got that, you know, thing that I need to put together, I can, you know, I can go to a physical location. If I have that, that really important video conference, you know, sort of a series of, you know, radio style, you know, DJ capability, uh, you know, uh, conference rooms that our folks can come in and use. Uh, and then some gathering areas, but taking spaces that maybe used to be 20, 25,000 square feet, consolidating them down to 5,000 square feet, you know, more of a check-in, check-out system, uh, you know, let our folks take advantage of those, you know, traditional office resources. We're also challenging the paradigm. We typically do our hiring in classes. Uh, so we, we like to bring cohorts of folks in. We feel like they learn better off of each other. But you know, we're challenging that paradigm that, you know, does onboarding really have to be in a downtown high rise in Boston or can that be on a ranch, you know, for four days a week in Jackson Hole? Um, and can you get a 24 hour cycle if we can put people on a ranch and not only do the technical components of onboarding, but also all the, you know, engagement and relationship components? Um, can we provide those spaces for teams to go and, you know, have their quarterly meetings? So that's, that's kind of the second leg of the stool for us on that front. And then the third leg is, and I, I, I love that the team has come up with this, which is, you know, we're partnering up with restaurant groups that are evening restaurants. So they're not open during the day. Many of them are struggling. Um, but if you rethink the way their space lays out, they've got a lounge, looks like a lot like the lounge did at our office. They've got tables, looks a lot like the open trading floor desks did at our office. Um, and, uh, and then they've got, you know, back rooms that at night they use as dining rooms. But if you rethink it during the day, they look a lot like a conference room. Um, and so, uh, so we're, you know, we're partnering up with those restaurant groups. They know how to serve food. They know cleanliness. Uh, and we can help them and they can help us. And we don't have to maintain a space four days or, you know, or five days a week or seven by 24. We can do it two or three days a week in our major population centers. So what, what are your expectations as far as hiring? Is it pretty much across all functional areas? Um, it is. We have uh, so a, a heavy focus on sales and marketing. Um, you know, technology talent uh, is always something difficult to come by. And in this economy in particular, there are just a lot of really smart, capable people that are out trying to, to figure out their next thing. Um, so we're, we're actively focused there. And and then with any growing company, there's always the necessary investments in our, you know, in our back office and our finance functions and things that are also critically important to, to ensure that we can scale and, 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 you know, continue to run efficiently. So, so why is now the ideal time to join Modus? Um, I think one, you know, Modus is very uniquely positioned for the paradigm that we're in. Um, you know, I, I was in Japan in February uh, as, you know, as COVID was really kind of sweeping through Asia. And I came back uh, to the States where it was still, still seemed like a problem, you know, on the other side of the ocean. Um, but I was like, wow, this is going to be interesting. I wonder if this, you know, starts to move towards us. Um, of course it did. You know, we sent our folks home in early March and, you know, I was very nervous. Our core business and our largest product line is around, you know, uh, reimbursement for people who drive for work. Um, and I got very concerned that uh, this could be a, you know, have a very negative, uh, you know, impact on our business. In fact, it's been just the opposite. We definitely have had some customers, our restaurant group customers, our entertainment customers who are really hurting and we're working hard with them uh, to, to help them navigate this. But on the flip side, we have a lot of customers that have needed to grow in order to meet market needs. A lot of our healthcare customers, uh, we deal with a lot of pharmaceutical uh, and pharmacy businesses on the retail side, uh, food and beverage, our liquor distributors in particular. Um, so we've had a lot of businesses that, that accelerated in growth. And then, you know, our other, you know, primary lines of business are, you know, around, uh, you know, remote work reimbursement. So, 
you know, everybody was being sent home and there are a lot of really good laws that require you to effectively reimburse your folks uh, when they are sent home. And then everyone also became more and more dependent on their devices. Um, and so we've seen a good surge in business. So I'd say the first reason is we're in a good place um, relative to just market paradigms and what I think are going to be a lot of long-term kind of tailwind trends around localized economies, more driving than flying, less public transit, uh, greater you know usage of your vehicle, and a much more accelerated blurring of you know personal and business assets and how you use them to to navigate your your work life. Um, the second is you know we have very progressive leadership, and I don't say that about myself. I say that about our board of directors, our investors, uh, my colleagues on the, the senior management team, which are you know they're you know they're brave enough, which is one of our core values, to recognize that sometimes. These are the environments where companies make their greatest gains um, and you have the biggest opportunity to really take step functions inside your market. And that requires, you know, prudent investment, wise investment, um, attracting, you know, good team members. But, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste um, is really the leadership mindset. And so we're very focused on you know, how we navigate this and do so in a, in a growth oriented fashion as opposed to a, a preservation and, and sort of uh, you know, cowering fashion. And I, I love that. I, and, you know, I think if you're out looking for someplace, you're a progressive thinker, you want to do good things, you want to have an impact, you want to be someplace that's brave enough to, to you know, to, to fight the fight uh, and, uh, and navigate the, the unknowns, but, but do so, you know, bravely and boldly. Um, and then, you know, lastly, you know, we're just getting started. Um, you know, it's, you know, I've been at, at Modus obviously since 2013. Seems like it's been, you know, a, a, a fair amount of time, but so many exciting innovations for us on the horizon and things where we can really improve the work life uh, for our end users and, and ultimately uh, give them more time back into their daily lives, allow them to spend more time, you know, doing things that matter. Uh, but also doing that in a backdrop where we really get to challenge some of the historical legacy thinking of the way people are managed, the way uh, administrative tasks get executed on, uh, you know, more of those purpose-driven elements that, uh, that get me excited, get our team excited, and are, and are very much a part of the future. Well, if you are interested in exploring opportunities at Modus, you can check out all their job openings, and they're fully remote now, so you can be located anywhere and apply to these jobs. Uh, go to venturefizz.com backslash Modus, and you'll find all their listings there. Craig, thanks so much for bringing us up to speed on what's happening at Modus. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the time, and uh, thanks for all that, uh, that you guys are doing to help companies like us navigate this as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. At VentureFizz, our mission is to share the stories of companies, their people, and culture. So if you're interested in more interviews with founders and executives in the tech industry, make sure you click on the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.